Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विनावदी तमस्तुमा वित विशावहै ओम शांति 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses 56 to 60 of chapter 2. Dukkeshvanudvigna manaha Dukkeshvanudvigna manaha Sukeshu vigatas prihaha Sukeshu vigatas prihaha Vita raga bhayakrodhaha Vita raga bhayakrodhaha Stitadhir muni ruchyate Stitadhir muni ruchyate Yassar vat Trana bisneha. Yes, sir, but Trana bisneha. Tat tat prapya shubha shubham. Tat tat prapya shubha shubham. Nabhinandati nadveshti. Nabhinandati nadveshti. Tasya pragna pratishtita. Tasya pragna pratishtita. Yada samharate chayam. Yada samharate chayam. Kurmongani vasarvashaha. Kurmongani vasarvashaha. Indriya nindriya thebya ha Indriya nindriya thebya ha Tasya pragnya pratishthita Tasya pragnya pratishthita Vishaya vinivartante Vishaya vinivartante Niraharasya dehinaha Niraharasya dehinaha Rasavarjam rasopyasya Rasavarjam rasopyasya Param drishtva nivartate Param drishtva nivartate Yatato hyapi kaunte ya Yatato hyapi kaunte ya Purushasya vipaschita ha Purushasya vipaschita ha Indriyani pramathini Indriyani pramathini 
हरंति प्रसभम मन हरंति प्रसभम मन हरि ओम एंड अ वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो लास्ट वीक वी हैव रीस्टार्टेड द भगवद गीता सीरीज and i had uh, recapitulated the points some of the key points from uh, verses 54 to 59 so that you get the flow of thought now uh, there were uh, many people who have uh, sent messages that uh it was amazing to uh hear the discourse where uh, that is last week because the same verses we had done before but when we heard this it was as if we were hearing it for the first time so i have received many requests from the old sadaks that is those who have been attending for quite some time whether i can restart from chapter 1 so first i thought they were uh, new sadaks who join but some of the old sadaks themselves are asking now definitely we are not going to do that because uh, you know all those videos will be released at some point but there is one thing which is uh, wonderful that is the moment you feel that no i have not mastered these verses i want to revisit them again and again the moment you get into that feeling it means your depth is increased see when you don't have so much of depth then your focus will be on reading a lot of books on gaining um a lot of material from outside there is no end to that you will uh, read the bhagavad gita you will read so many other scriptures you know lot of books books after books you will be reading you will be behind external information the quantity of knowledge but when you develop depth it is only through personal sadhana that you can develop the spiritual depth now once you develop the spiritual depth your focus will not be in covering too much of material outside quantity wise but your focus will be on getting into the depth of whatever little you are studying that is where this yogic approach actually starts so even though i uh, i am following the yogic approach i have introduced this many years back to you all for you to really get into the spirit of yogic approach itself will take some time it's a gradual process so as your depth increases further and further you will actually not want to get into too much of material the culmination of your depth and perception is single pointedness in meditation because if you take meditation we just take one mantra and then go on repeating it that that can be done only at an advanced stage and after a while you will find even that mantra um is no longer useful to you you will drop even the mantra and get into direct 
silence, a state of thoughtlessness. That is the real, real depth in spirituality. So you, it's like a cone when you're uh, least evolved. Now you seek so much outside. So when you um, or, uh, come to spirituality also, you will want to cover a lot of length. But as you do your sadhana and your depth increases, your, the quantity of knowledge will start reducing. But the quality, the depth of perception, the depth of penetration will increase. And then a time would come where you will just pick up one idea and throughout the day, whether you are working or whenever you get spare time, you will keep on reflecting, you will do the manana and you will try to practice that, you will try to master that. And that is when your meditative powers will increase. When we talk of meditation, it is nothing but single-pointedness. Now, if you really ask me, even that is not meditation, that is only a preparation. Meditation is actually getting into the silence. Just silencing your mind is real, real meditation. But the uh, preparation for that is to get into single-pointedness. Now, when you are looking everywhere, when your mind is running helter-skelter, you will not be able to focus single-pointedly and get into the depth. So, what I am trying to do every Sunday is not merely give you information, not merely give you the knowledge part, but I am trying to make things conducive so that you develop the depth in your perception. Not only about approaching the Bhagavad Gita, the depth in your life itself. Because when you develop the depth here, the same mind you will carry uh, in all the other aspects of your life. So, even though of course for practical reasons, I am not going to uh, uh, accept that request, starting from chapter 1, it's still a very positive sign. Actually, one person had written, you know, the, the more I attend these sessions, I understand that it really does not matter which verse we are in, which uh, chapter you are in, which uh, text you are doing. It is about what you are absorbing and how you are using this wisdom to transform your life. So, when we talk of the depth in perception, you have to start from outside and then slowly, slowly go within you. So, what is the outermost aspect of your personality? It is nothing but your senses. The five sense organs of perception and the five sense organs of action. So, that is why they say, that mastery over oneself starts with mastery over your own sense organs. But the moment they say you should master your senses, that does not mean that you should stop with that. That is the starting point. But they lay a lot of emphasis in gaining mastery over your own senses because the senses are extremely powerful. They can actually take you away from whatever path you have chosen for yourself. We will be seeing that in verse 60 today. Actually from verse 60 onwards is going to give you many, many practical tips, the psychology, how exactly 
you lose control over your own senses and how do you regain that control or mastery that's what he's going to talk about so one of the names of lord krishna is rishikesha we saw that uh, in the inner strength series rishikesha means one who has gained mastery over his own senses rishika isha he is a lord of his senses he is a master of his senses so in verses 59 58 and 59 what did we see he started off in verses uh, 58 actually so first he explained who is sthita pragnya and general it is inner nature and then the sthita dihi aspect which is how does he function in the world and then he merged both and said actually there is no difference between sthita pragnya and sthita dihi a yogi is one who never ever puts on any act or show whatever is there within him is what he will express outside if you really want to practice that sadhana in a deeper way start off with external things first you know generally in a home the hall you will keep very neat but your bedroom may not be so neat that shows that you are more interested in showing to people that you are neat rather than absorbing the a uh, quality of neatness it is not what others perceive about you that matters but what you are intrinsically so in spirituality you should become very simple and truthful truthful to the core never put on any act don't wear any mask when you are all alone by yourself whatever you are that is what your true nature is not what you portray to the world outside you know in the corporate culture they actually teach you to be very artificial you should be careful you know whether you are attending a phone call whether you are um, selling a, a particular product whatever it is that you are doing they give special training how you should conduct yourself i am not against that that is also uh, required in that scenario but if you are not careful that will become a habit for you instead of creating the inner transformation you will become you 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 will start uh putting on a show all the time so that is what he covered in verse 57 a yogi is one who is the same inside and who is the same outside also see today life has become so empty you know even when you laugh you see you go to a party you see people are laughing it is not coming from the heart it even laughing smiling everything has become a formality today so my request to all of you if you want to become yogis is to become very sincere about whatever it is that you are expressing when you smile and when you say good morning good day to someone that should come from your heart you should really mean it you see a small baby laughing and sometimes you go and tickle the baby or you play with the baby the baby just smiles and laughs and you can see that every pore of the baby will be laughing the baby will not laugh merely from the lips or from the mouth 
the eyes will be laughing, the cheeks, everything, you know. That is the hundred uh, percent sincerity which you should develop. So, having completed that, then he got into the sense control aspect in verse 58. He said, a sthita pragnya functions like a tortoise. A tortoise has six parts, the four limbs, the tail and the head. Normally, the tortoise is free, but whenever it senses danger, immediately it withdraws all the parts under the protection of the heart shell. So, that is a very uh, deep sadhana tip which he has given all of us. So, each and every one of you, you will have one or two areas of weakness. In that area of weakness, you should be careful. You cannot afford to freely mingle in an area of weakness. You will invariably fall. Supposing, let us say, you have a weakness for alcohol. This is just an example I am giving. Now, you cannot say that I will go to the bar, I will sit there and then I will control myself. It will not work that way. You will have to withdraw temporarily from the sense object where you have weakness. If you don't have any weakness, no issue in that area. But whichever area you have a weakness, you need to follow discipline. It is very important. Once you conquer that weakness, thereafter you can freely uh, uh, contact the sense object in that area, nothing will happen to you. So, f in order to uh, do the sadhana of that verse, that is verse number 58, what is the uh, criteria? The criteria is you need to locate the area of your own weakness. So, this is the first obstacle you need to cross. Your mind will not allow you to accept that you have a weakness. No alcoholic will accept that I am addicted to alcohol. If you talk to him, he will say, um, you know, any time I want, I can just leave this. That is the... Um, that is the illusion which the mind creates, the justification. A person who is very angry, short-tempered, he will say, no, 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 I am not short-tempered. I am getting angry uh, uh, only for the other person's benefit. A person who is very, very fearful inside says, no, I don't fear, I, I don't have any fear. It is very interesting. When you have a strong weakness, now the ego immediately comes and puts this obstacle. It does not allow the mind to accept that you have the weakness. Last week in the uh, comments, in the YouTube comment section, one girl had put her observation about this point. She had said that it takes a lot of courage, sir, to say that, yes, I have this weakness. She is 100% right, which means she has absorbed that point in a very deep way because I could sense the bhavana, the energy, when she had put that comment, you know. So, if you are able to overcome that first weakness, then in verse number 59, he says, the external circumstance will change. The entire nature will come and help you. He said, 
the sense objects will turn away from an abstinent person but the internal relish will not go away but even that will go away once you see the supreme means you are still in the path of self control and self mastery so the inner weakness what he calls as rasa will not go away fully the taste will still remain but the sense objects will go away in that area of weakness they will no longer come and tempt you so what is the principle which he is trying to give here he says nature will actually support you see if you read verses 58 and 59 together that is if you if you take an overview you get a tremendous uh, sadhana principle in verse 58 what he says is you first put in your effort and in verse 59 he says nature will support you so this principle you need to absorb in your life if you want to achieve anything if you fix a goal you say i want this in life now the first thing which the mind does is it looks for help from outside who can help me and invariably i find that people who don't achieve their goals they go on blaming circumstances they say i have tremendous talent i would have been so successful but the reason why i am not successful is because uh, the environment was not conducive i was not given opportunities in life this is another obstacle towards becoming successful in your life see the same principle which is applicable for inner spiritual growth is also applicable externally when you want to achieve external success also so if you want to become successful in any field what should you do apply the principles of 57 and 58 what is 50 uh, what is the principle of 57 the first step should be what should i do in order to achieve my goal am i willing to pay the price am i willing to put the hard work consistent efforts in order to achieve the goal or am i just not willing to put in efforts but i am looking for external help mere external help you go and talk to any successful person let it be any field it's not that they have not uh, faced any challenges in their path they would have faced a lot of challenges but in spite of all the challenges they would have still um, you know applied themselves diligently consistently see remember whenever you uh, meet a successful person whenever you read about uh, the, the incidents of a successful person always see the the principle behind it how is it that that person achieved that success and you will find a tremendous willingness to put in the right kind of effort see supposing a father is successful in a field and let us say he pushes his son or daughter into that field and tries to promote how long will that work it may work for a for a while but ultimately that person has to have the willing first of all he or she needs to have the talent apart from that that person also needs to have the willingness to put in consistent efforts so you should reverse your approach the general weakness of the mind 
is it does not want to put in any effort but instead it wants the entire nature to support whatever uh, its endeavors are so as a yogi you should now reverse this process don't be bothered about external circumstances a lotus blooms only in the dirty waters the lotus never complains oh the water is dirty therefore i cannot bloom no complains whatsoever let the water be dirty but i will bloom like a lotus that is the message of verses 57 and 58 when you take a uh, sorry 58 and 59 when you take the overview so first write down your own goals what is it that i want to achieve in my life number 1 number 2 what is the price i am willing to pay am i willing to put in all the efforts required what is required i want to get married for example you know um there is a there is, there is a person he is now married settled and all that he came to me long time back and he said for uh, last one year i've been looking for a partner i want to get married but i have not been able to get married i said looking for a partner means what did you do he said uh, you know i i just told a couple of my friends i said that's all is it otherwise he said nothing i said how will you get a if you just sit and uh, sit in your room and say that i want a partner how, how are you going to get a partner in life you need to put efforts so you may have to uh, uh, i don't know you may have to join some matrimony sites whatever you know you look for alliances put that effort then only you will be able to um, you know have some choices the opportunities will not come on their own it is you who need uh, uh, it is you who needs to create the opportunity he immediately understood you know i have uh, it's very interesting because uh, in uh, the, uh, in different fields people have come and told me that i have not been able to achieve that is fulfill my goal and when we do the analysis uh, we always find that they have not put in proper efforts a person came and told me that uh, you know i am trying to I want I have a property but it is not getting sold at all. I asked that person okay so what efforts have you put to sell it? He just put it in some website you know one small website he just said this property is available for sale that's it. Thereafter nothing he did. I said that is not enough you have to do your part that is called karma yoga. You have to put in your efforts. Meet a lot of uh, Uh, real estate people the brokers you, you know you put the word around if you play your part then nature will support you it is a small test nature supports those people who are willing to put in tremendous efforts in life and once you are willing to put in tremendous effort in order to achieve a goal you will not look for any support outside but it will come on its own so follow this principle from this moment onwards don't complain don't say i didn't have any opportunity my parents didn't um, build a lot of wealth for me my you know i didn't go to the a good school i uh, my teachers didn't teach me properly you know we always keep complaining but a person who takes responsibility uh, for his or her own life and says yes i have not put in the right kind of efforts so let me now uh, focus on that 
that person alone will be successful. So when you don't have opportunities in life, you create opportunities. So this principle can be applied if you, uh, uh, both externally and internally. If you want to achieve success in any field, apply verses 58 and 59. Fix a goal and then ask yourself, what is the price I am willing to pay for this? What kind of efforts am I supposed to put in? Now, if you follow this successfully, then comes verse 59. That is, the, the, this principle is in verse 58. Then in verse 59, he says, the law of demand and supply. If you really want to conquer your weaknesses, nature will support you. Initially, only those temptations will be there. That is for you to become strong internally. Nature will test you and see whether you have that true metal, true stuff in order to succeed. So all your obstacles will get pulverized. The entire forces of nature will come and support you. So three things you need to do. Number one, fix a goal. Number two, put in whatever efforts are required. And number three, stop complaining about anything outside you or anyone. The moment you get into the mode of complaining, you will fritter away your energies. It will become a habit. You know, there is a beautiful statement a thinker said, I complained that I had no shoes until I met a person who had no feet. What an amazing statement this is. I complained that I had no shoes until I met a person who had no feet. Don't listen to this mechanically. Absorb it. As Shakespeare says, you know, grapple it to your soul. Don't hear it merely with your ears. But be fully here and absorb it completely. It can change your life. If you want to complain, there will be always so many things to complain about. But if you want to uh, feel grateful, again there will be a lot of things to be grateful about. It is where you focus and where you invest your energy that matters. So become a very positive thinker. When circumstances are tough, so what? You become more tough. This, that capacity is called um, uh, tenacity. Tenacity means the unwillingness to accept defeat. Put in the best of your efforts. You know, unwillingness to lose, but, uh, you know, go all out and put in your efforts. What we do generally is we start, see the uh, first, uh, the first weakness is you don't put in any effort at all. You look for um, uh, external help, merely external help. The second thing is, you know, you put in a little bit of effort and the first obstacle that comes before you, immediately you stop your efforts and you start grumbling. You start complaining. A yogi never does that. See, when I'm using the word yogi, uh, I am talking of a person who is capable of achieving success spiritually and materially. 
because ultimately the principles are one and the same. So this is what has been portrayed by Lord Krishna himself. He he was called Yogeshwara, means the the Lord of Yoga. He had mastered himself completely, but he was also constantly engaging himself in the external world. He did all his duties to perfection. So that is what you should aim at. So when you want to conquer your sense weaknesses, he says, first you put in all the efforts. The next step is the nature will support you. The sense objects will turn away from an abstinent person, for a person who truly wants to conquer his or her weakness. But the relish will remain. The weakness will still be there, but he will he will gain a lot of uh, control. Even that relish will go away once he experiences the supreme. That weakness will completely go away once he becomes a sthitapragnya. Means uh, once he achieves that higher state of wisdom. So till then, you should not leave your sadhana. So up to this, we saw in verse number 59. So now we will do verse 60. Yata to hyapi kaunte ya. Yata to hyapi kaunte ya. Purushasya vipashchitaha. Purushasya vipashchitaha. Indriyani pramathini. Indriyani pramathini. Haranti prasabham manaha. Haranti prasabham manaha. Yatato hyapi kaunteya. Purushasya vipashchitaha. Yatato, yatataha means the people who are striving, you know who are putting in tremendous efforts. Api means even. Even for a person who is putting in so much of efforts, he uses the word vipaschitaha. Vipaschitaha means purushasya vipaschitaha, the wise person. Even for such a person, indriyani pramathini, Indriyani means the senses. Pramathini means uh, the turbulent senses. Haranti prasabhammanaha. They carry away forcibly that person's mind, he says. So the turbulent senses of even the wise person who is watchfully striving Indeed, O Kaunteya, another name of Arjuna, forcibly carry away the mind. So, in this verse, he is actually explaining to you what is the power of your own senses. So, in verses 58 59, he gave you so many tips. He said, you need to conquer your senses. Now, he says, you should understand what is the power of your senses. If you want to conquer an enemy, you should know, first you should assess the strength and weaknesses. You should know the power of the enemy. Then only you can conquer. You know, it's, it's like playing a chess game. If, if anybody has played the chess game, he or she would be able to appreciate what I'm saying. When you play the chess game, it is not about calculating what moves which you need to make. It is about calculating what are the possible moves which the opponent will make. 
great great chess champions had mastered that art you know there was a uh, the, the bobby fisher who was the world number 1 uh many years back after that he st- stopped playing chess now uh, once he was uh, uh watching the game between two other grandmasters and uh he said the 65th move this person will win everybody was stunned so immediately he proved it you know all the uh, moves the uh, the uh, the best moves he played and showed and 65th move that person was winning so life is also like that only whenever you get into any activity first you should know what you are getting into whenever you are buying something for yourself you should know whether that is going to uh, incur more expenses for you in the long run will you do will you have do you have the capacity to maintain it so when it comes to sense control also he says first you should make a thorough study of your own senses what is the power of your senses that is so beautifully covered in this verse i have uh, just given the translation but when we go deeper into this verse you will find tremendous messages so what is he saying the turbulent senses he uses the word pramathin pramathin indriyani indriyani means the senses actually there is a deeper meaning to indriyani we'll see that but first pramatin indriyani pramatin we are translating it as turbulent the turbulent senses but the word pramatin actually means much more than that pramatin means excessive paining tormenting harassing torturing agitating you know afflicting a lot of pain not only that pramathan also means killing or destroying he uses such a strong word pramathan to describe the senses so when your senses are not under your control he says they will become pramathin means first they will cause immense pain to you see when when you are a self controlled person you can be you can lead a happy life but when you become addicted to something some sense object thereafter that object will start giving you a lot of pain the senses will the uh, senses which are not under your control but which is which have become which have come under the influence of an external object now they can cause tremendous pain they will torment you they will not allow you to sleep peacefully they will harass you torture you you will lose your peace of mind and finally he says you will get destroyed by your own senses you have to be very careful you know in the mahabharata um when uh, the kauravas invited the pandavas and then they played the dice game and they defeated them then uh, the duryodhana wanted to send them to the forest for 12 years and 13th year they had to live incognito all their wealth everything was taken away it was well within the power of dhritarashtra who was duryodhana's father you know to have said that you take back your kingdom you know because after all uh, they were all his uh, 
his brother's sons only. And you go and you lead a peaceful life, we will also be peaceful. He could have done that. He could have stopped the dice game. Why even this very war where this Bhagavad Gita is being given, if Dhridrashtra had wanted, he could have stopped the war also. Because he was the ultimate king. But he didn't do that. He uh, uh, supported Duryodhana and he sent the Pandavas to the forest. Now what has been described is that the day the Pandavas went away to the forest, from that day onward, Dhritarashtra could not sleep. That very night when he went to sleep, he was unable to sleep. So he called his youngest brother, Vidura, who was also the minister there. So he used to take advice from him. He was a wise person, you know, Vidura. And he asks Vidura, Vidura, why is it that I am unable to sleep? And Vidura gives him uh, the advice. That, that, is, that entire portion is called Vidura Niti, considered to be uh, a very powerful text, which gives tremendous... Uh, uh, tips on how to lead your life. He says, I have lost my sleep, I am unable to sleep. To which Vidura says, the reason why you are unable to sleep, O oh brother, is because you are not in control of your own self. You are supporting Duryodhana in this unrighteous act. Your mind has left you. He says, he asks him, so what should I do now if I want to uh, peacefully sleep? He says, call back the Pandavas, give them whatever is due to them. They will also be peaceful, you can also be peaceful. But no, his mind refuses to accept that. That is why he had to suffer. So very interesting, whenever you lose control over yourself, you will lose your peace of mind. So he is dramatizing that and he is explaining it by using this one word, Pramatin. So Pramatin means that which causes a lot of pain, it torments you, harasses and tortures you and then it increases your agitations to such an extent in a very turbulent way and finally destroys you. So this entire thing is covered by this one word, Pramatin. You know, as I have repeatedly said, Sanskrit is a, is a, is a multi-dimensional language. So when they use a particular word, it means so, uh, so much. See, we are used to thinking in a unidimensional way. So if you really want to get into this yogic approach, you will have to drop your old way of thinking and absorb this multi-dimensional way of thinking. It's very, very difficult to translate these verses in uh, English. That does not give you the full impact. But I am I'm in that process. I am trying to uh, uh, get the translation to a near good extent, you know, in a yogic way, a yogic translation, so that these words can uh, trigger the uh, your inner journey. The, the Sanskrit construction has been made that way. You, you just cannot read it and pass it by. You, you will be forced to stop. So why is he using the word Pramatin? Because that's exactly what the senses do to you. When the senses are under your control, you are the master, you can be very peaceful. But when the same senses go out of your control, the first thing that will happen is it will start giving pain to you. If you want, you observe. See, supposing you take any sense enjoyment. Let us say you are eating your favorite sweet. Now when you are under control 
and you eat the right amount of quantity, it will give you that enjoyment. But if you lose your control and if you start indulging in that sweet, what will happen? After a while, it, you, you will no longer enjoy it. It will start giving you pain. Not only that, this unhealthy habit will cause health issues in you. You may get into um, uh, diabetes, you may get uh, various other diseases because you are not following any discipline here. That is when the pain starts. At least at that time, if you understand it and regain your control, it's fine. But invariably, your mind will not want to do that. You will go on indulging. You will lose your control more and more. That is when the pain will become excessive. The senses will start tormenting you. It will cause harassing, torturing and afflicting tremendous pain in you. At least at that time, if you uh, withdraw and if you gain this wisdom and say, now let me work on myself, some hope is there. But if you don't you know, heed to all this, then the very senses will destroy you, he says. How many people I know who have tremendous talent, but all that talent has gone waste because of some sensual, some sense weakness. Arjuna himself, of course, Arjuna had the uh, emotional weakness. Any kind of weakness will not allow you to function productively. Here, he is referring to this, the weakness of the senses. You can extend it even to emotions, thoughts everywhere. So, Arjuna himself, you know, when he suffered from the emotional weakness, he was unable to act. That is why Lord Krishna gives the Bhagavad Gita. So, the senses are extremely powerful. That is why he says, if you want to become a sthita pragnya, if you want to attain enlightenment, the first thing you need to focus on is to gain mastery over your own senses. Otherwise, your life will not be peaceful. And what is interesting is, when you don't have control over your senses, you cannot enjoy the sense objects also. You lose the very capacity to enjoy. That is the meaning of pramatin. It causes pain to you. When you overindulge, for example, in, uh, let us say, food, after a while, due to health issues, you will lose the very capacity to enjoy the food. That is why you find, uh, you know, how, how is it that people become addicts to alcohol or drugs and all that? Is that first they drink X amount of alcohol, but after a while, due to their indulgence, uh, they don't get any pleasure out of that uh, quantity. So then they have to increase the quantity in order to get back the same pleasure. And that keeps on going. They go on increasing till a time where they become completely addicted. They cannot live without it. So, what is the pain he is talking about? The, the slavishness. Whenever you are a slave, you will be in pain. When you are a master, that gives you a lot of confidence and peace. So, when you are a slave to your own senses, that will cause tremendous pain in your life. You will be agitated. Why is it that when you get addicted to something that causes immense pain? The problem is, once you get addicted to some sense object, that will not give you any pleasure. As I told you, you will have to go on increasing the dosage till a time would come where the contact with that sense object will not give you any pleasure at all. But, 
since you are addicted to it what is the state of this addiction of this weakness since you are addicted to it when that object is removed that will cause tremendous pain in you when you get married you know the first on the marriage day so many so many hopes you know you you get married only to uh enjoy life to to be happy together but is that what that happens due to the wrong way of functioning after many many years now the same family is not giving you that happiness which you wanted it to give but then what happens is okay so you may ask me sir shall i now go into solitude no if that if you cut off contacts with your family that will cause pain in you it's the same principle with the sense objects also so when you first contact a sense object it will give you a certain amount of pleasure but if you are a master you will stop there you will know when that pleasure will get converted into pain at that point you will say enough you will be very disciplined but when you are not disciplined when things are not under your control you are unable to be uh, to uh, you know you are unable to draw the line then you go all out and indulge and when you get into that indulgence then the pain will start because you will start becoming a slave to your own senses and that sense object and as your slavishness increases the pain also increases okay then one fine day you say let me just give it up but you will not be in a position to give it up because the moment that object is taken away from you the senses will become turbulent they will agitate you that is what he means by pramathin you know every person who is into drug addiction or alcoholism uh, they call uh, the psychologists call it as withdrawal symptoms when you remove that drug then their senses become very agitated and turbulent and their minds become uh, highly stressed technically they call it as withdrawal symptoms so when i give the example of an alcoholic or drug addict it becomes very clear to you but what you need to understand is you are addicted to everything in life whether it is wealth whether it is relationships every you know you have the five sense organs of perception you are addicted to you know all the areas you may not call it as addiction but it is a fact you are you are leading a slavish life today you know in the um, avadut gita avadut gita comes in the shrimad bhagavatam where uh, bhagwan um, datatreya you know he was uh, he he was supposed to be the avatar of shiva vishnu and brahma all the three put together the three forces were fully awakened in bhagwan datatre he is considered uh, as the uh, guru of all the siddhas so he gave out the philosophy to a king so what happened is a king was walking by and he saw datatre who was just standing there and when he saw the the tejas the spiritual brilliance in datatreya's face he went and bowed down to him and he said sir can you teach me can you give me the higher wisdom to which amazingly how the, the answer which datatreya gave is what is amazing what he said was uh, i i am not a guru i am not a master i don't know why you are coming and asking me the king persisted he said no sir from your very presence i can see 
that you have got enlightened you have achieved that supreme peace that that was a non verbal communication you know the vibrations which he was radiating and the king was subtle enough to perceive that not everybody can perceive the true spiritual brilliance of a master you need to be tuned into that frequency otherwise you will take a master as a just another ordinary person this is so beautifully described in lord krishna's life you know uh, very interesting his mother yashoda saw him as a naughty son and she tied him and when say narada saw that he smiled he said you know your whom are you whom whom is she trying to tie the greatest avatar krishna was called the purna avatar you know the infinite manifesting as a finite fully so she is tying him why because she she was unable to see his greatness so that was um, uh, uh, amusing for a uh, sage narada because every day she is seeing him but she only sees him as her uh, little son not his son who is doing a lot of you know activities jumping here there doing so many things that's all she was able to perceive krishna's friends perceived him as a very uh, truthful friend that's all when he uh, uh, when he masterminded the war how did uh, uh, shakuni perceive krishna it's so beautifully described shakuni perceived krishna as a person uh, who was able to plan and scheme as a master um, uh, strategist that's all so whatever your mind is that is how you will perceive you will limit the master's uh, stature to uh, to the extent your mind can penetrate but here was the king who was a true true spiritual seeker he had seen the best of things in the world and because he was a king you know and that had uh, not given him that satisfaction so he was seeking the highest wisdom and when he saw datatreya standing there quietly he was immediately able to recognize his greatness so even when datatreya told him that i don't know anything you go and ask some other guru he didn't leave him he said no sir you are you have experienced the ultimate and i want guidance from you to which bhagwan datatreya said i don't know what you're saying but uh, i have only been uh, a student all my life i have just been learning that's how every master is you know a true guru never considers himself as as a guru he only plays the role of a guru or a teacher whether to when the situation demand they may teach but otherwise you see the greatest of masters were very very simple and humble they were only students constantly learning if you go to the himalayas and you see the great siddhas and the holy yogis they are all very simple child like unassuming that is how bhagwan datatreya was so he said whatever i have learnt i can share it with you and the king happily accepted that is uh, then he gave out the whole wisdom and that is called avadhuta gita the datatreya gita you know given out by the great datatreya so what does he say in that in that a uh, portion in one portion he gives the power of the senses the word pramathin krishna is just uh, the using the word pramathin just like that but in the avadhut gita he explains that thoroughly he says why the senses are considered as pramathin why are they so powerful he gives five examples he says from from nature he picks up because that's what all the time he was uh, he had learned so many things from nature so he gave out that wisdom he said weakness 
to even one sense organ can destroy a creature. For example, you take the moth. The moth has a weakness for light, the eyes, you know, the first sense organ, the eyes. So it has a weakness. So what does a moth do? It goes near the light and then it dies. You know, sometimes uh, the, 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 those insects which come, especially during the rainy season, they all come and hover around the lights which you switch on in your uh, room. Even recently it happened. So many a times I've tried to switch off the light because the, you know, I know that within half an hour they're going to die. But uh, the moment you switch off the light, the, the, all the insects go in search of some other source of light. They even go out of the house and they locate some, uh, you know, some bulb which is uh, glowing and they all go there and keep on hovering around that light till they get destroyed. Very, very interesting. He says, so the moth has a weakness for the eyes, for the, for the light, so it gets destroyed. The second example which Dattatreya gives is of a bee. If you take a bee, it has a weakness for smell. So it smells the honey and then what does it do? It goes inside the flower. It starts uh, 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 tasting the honey and slowly, slowly the flower closes on the bee. The bee dies inside the flower. Just one sense weakness that of smell, destroys the bee. The third example which the Tatriya gives is that of a deer. A deer has weakness for sound, ears. You know, the way the hunters catch uh, the deer, they used to catch, is uh, they used to play uh, the drums, you know. Uh, they used to create a lot of sound. So the deer used to get attracted to that sound and they all used to come. And once they come, the hunters used to catch the deer. That is how, uh, that, is, that is a technique which hunters used to use to catch deer. Because a every deer has this weakness for sound. And due to that weakness, that gets destroyed. And then the fourth example which the Tatriya gives is that of an elephant. An elephant has a weakness for touch, the skin, the fifth, the fourth uh, sense organ. So, generally, they catch an elephant. Hunters used to catch an elephant during uh, its mating season. Because uh, during the mating season, the elephant becomes weak. During the non-mating season, it's very difficult to uh, catch an elephant. So the hunters used to look for uh, uh, the, uh, the, the mating season and during the mating season they used to go and lay the trap for the elephant and catch it. So the elephant gets trapped because of that one sense weakness. And then the fifth, uh, fifth example he gives is that of a fish. There is a fish has a weakness for taste, tongue. So what do they do? They catch a fish by keeping a bait, some uh, food, and then they wait patiently. The fish by itself comes and gets trapped. And the moment it, can, it, it tries to eat the food, it gets caught. It is destroyed. So, what uh, the Tatriya sees is that weakness for any one sense organ is enough to kill a creature. And then he says, you can imagine a human being has weakness for all the five senses. Then what is our plight? 
you can imagine that is why he uses the word pramatin beautiful word if you can understand that that word pramatin you will begin to understand the power of your own senses and when the senses are so powerful you will focus on gaining mastery over the senses because imagine when something is extremely powerful and when you gain control over it that will give you so much of strength this is not to discourage you this word pramatin oh senses are so powerful what can i do it is not for that purpose he is giving you he is saying such a powerful tool you have if you gain control over it you can achieve anything in life you know it's like uh, when uh, 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 let us say a latest uh, pc is given to you a latest laptop is given to you now he is trying to tell you see listen this laptop has so much of power with this you can connect to the entire world the uh, uh, what is the intrinsic uh, you know the the details of the laptop he gives so much of ram so much of uh, hard disk is uh, the internal system memory is so much all that the feature everything he explains to you immediately not to frighten you to say that you have such a powerful equipment with you if you misuse it you will get into problems but if you use it properly the same senses will help you to achieve anything in life so that is the meaning of pramathin the the yogic meaning of pramathin it's very powerful so pramathin indriyani now when he talks of pramathin he gives you the power of the senses but when he says indriyani you know he, we are we are translating it as senses but next week we will see that uh, in more depth because indriyani actually gives you a clue it gives you a clue to what is more powerful than the sense organs and how you uh, can gain mastery you know there is a clue there we will see that next week so today uh, i have given you a, a very very uh, powerful points for you to ponder upon that is the power of your own senses first we started off with the uh, overview of uh, 58 and 59 that is something which you definitely uh, definitely need to uh, think about and start applying in your life and then the word pramathin just a basic analysis and among the five senses find out which sense organ do you have a tremendous weakness for you you can grade your own five senses it's not that all the five senses you will have the same amount of weakness no very very interesting that is the first sadhana and the more you do that you know the more cautious you will become that is how uh, you know you you will get prepared to become a sthita prajna without any analysis without any understanding if you just jump into uh, you know the sense enjoyment you will end up destroying yourself you all your peace of mind will go you will become highly stressed so reflect on these the the principles which tatatreya uh, has given us the five uh, creatures you know so when he talks of the moth when he talks of the bee when he talks of the deer elephant and fish they, okay that they are all external creatures but all these five creatures are there within you your eyes you know if they if your eyes are under your control then you are a rishikesha you are a master but when they are not under your control you will become like a moth when your the uh, uh, the sense of smell is not under your control you will become like a bee 
you know those aspects you will you, you will start acquiring and they will slowly slowly start reducing all your inner powers a person who does not have sense control will not have any power in his life and such a person cannot evolve spiritually also okay so reflect on these points we will see the indriyani portion next week and then we will go on with the rest of the verse he uses the word vipashchitah which is very very powerful what does he mean we have just translated it as a wise person because it's very difficult to give the further dimension and then he says yatatah one who is striving yatatah actually has uh, five uh, dimensions to it if you can absorb that and apply it in your life you can actually achieve anything because generally we say put an effort but what kind of effort all that we will see in the coming weeks okay so now we'll have meditation uh, before meditation just a, a small thing uh, somebody has uh, I mean, there have been many questions which have been posted. I'm just taking a couple of the questions, personal questions which they have asked, where they require an answer immediately. Uh, a lady has uh, asked this question. I'm not mentioning the name. She has said that uh, even after five years of marriage, she is unable to conceive. I'm unable to conceive. I've seen many doctors. They are saying. there is a low amh the amh levels are low so for the last two months i am chanting yoga sankirtan regularly please guide me how to come out of this problem this is one thing there is also another lady uh, who has uh, asked this question that uh, she has developed some kind of uh, whitish patches around her lips and the doctors are saying that that is a allergic reaction to the lipstick which she is using so she was asking for some healing now i just wanted to give a few tips to uh both 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 of you and also others also because these tips will be uh, these are general health tips you know as far as the lady with the lipstick is uh, the, the allergy is concerned see whenever uh you have that issue the better thing would be go for natural products if you listen to the yoga sankirtan and all that that problem will get solved the healing will happen very fast and anyway i'm also invoking the healing energy i'll definitely i've already done it but uh, from your side uh, see you already know that that lipstick is causing some allergy because they are all chemically based so what is always advisable is try to go for more organic products for natural products so you if you, if you look around if you search you will definitely get products whether it is lipstick or whether it is a soap which you are using you know go for as as much as possible go for chemical free products whether you will be successful in getting 100% chemical free or not i don't know but if you search you will definitely get as less chemicals as possible that is good for health especially your skin even the soap which you are using go for uh, uh, non chemical organic soaps where they have used natural ingredients like coconut oil uh, sandalwood those kind of things you know not commercialized ones similarly for the uh, the lip allergy Uh, apart from whatever uh, treatment you may be taking uh, you can just apply uh, uh, coconut oil uh, coconut oil has uh, very good properties to heal the skin you know that's a very ancient uh, method which uh, even today if you go to some of the uh, villages in the in india you know they they use coconut oil for, for many many skin problems so you can try that and listen to the yoga sankirtan regularly that 
that problem should go away as far as uh, this lady who has asked about uh, conception there have been many uh, uh, ladies who have uh, uh, who have reported that uh, they were unable to conceive and then they did the sadhana regularly and uh, they had positive results even recently there is one girl in chennai who she actually had a lot of issues in the uterus some uh, uh, you know they they call it technically as chocolate cysts or something and she was saying uh, the, the the gynecologist had said that that was preventing her from getting from conceiving the chances were reducing but uh, she worked on it she did consistently she did the sadhana and uh, amazingly all those issues have got resolved and today she has conceived similarly there is uh, there is one lady who was unable to conceive till the age of 39 but then she worked on it she did the sadhana she has uh, you know she is uh, she is now even given birth to a baby now why i am telling you this uh, reporting these um, uh, incidents because they all told me the reason why i am telling you this is first you should get that faith and confidence see if you listen to the yoga sankirtan sadhana first of all you you have mentioned that i have been doing the chanting of yoga sankirtans uh, yoga sankirtan so i don't know what you're doing where uh, have you attended the yoga sankirtan empowerment it looks like you've attended the empowerment but in these uh, you know when it comes to giving birth to a baby it is always suggested that husband and wife should do together that will give you the best results so whether your husband attended the yoga sankirtan empowerment i don't know but even if you're not attended at least the sadhana he should also do from his end and as far as you are concerned follow the principles which i gave you during the empowerment session it is not you you're not supposed to chant so you use the word chanting i don't know whether you're trying to chant it loudly or anything this is a science it's a science of energy so most of our problems are psychosomatic when your mind is stressed you uh, you know the body also acquires some issues so when the stress level goes away when you throw out all the factors which are uh, the emotional fab blocks and various other factors which are uh, causing the disease then you will find that the disease also goes away it is not a miracle in the sense of uh, you know some magic is done and suddenly the healing will happen it's not like that it's a science so what you need to do is play the yoga sankirtan every day close your eyes and do the deep breathing all this method i taught you during the empowerment session so follow that but one important thing is don't do the yoga sankirtan sadhana in order to conceive then your whole mind is only on the fact that oh i don't have a baby so when you're doing the yoga sankirtan sadhana you forget about this problem and just do the sadhana in a free way whatever the karmic blocks are there uh, are there uh, regarding that issue they will all come out and you do the deep breathing and release them that is something which you need to do the second thing is generally i find that when you are uh, when you have these kind of issues you know uh, the people who come and meet you it could be your own relatives your own friend they will constantly keep asking you what happened you not had got a child now that adds on to the pressure the more pressurized your mind is the more uh, difficult you will find to get us uh, the, the more difficult it will be to get a solution so the next thing you need to practice is it does not matter what any other person thinks so it is not only an advice to the wife but in case the husband is watching i am also uh, requesting him so bo- both of you together don't add on to the pressure when somebody comes and keeps asking you tell them no we have not had decided to go in for a child we'll see that in the future who is anybody else to come and cause pressure in your life so don't allow that to cause pressure the social pressure plays a major role 
in these kind of issues. This is what uh, I have uh, observed in many uh, uh, people, you know. So, do the sadhana in a simple, straightforward way with a lot of faith in your own self-healing abilities and uh, surrender to the higher Shakti, then chances are that your problem will get solved. So, don't, uh, don't think that listening to Yoga Sankirtan is like another form of medicine. See, this is, I am not a medical person. This is a, this is a science of energy which completely purifies you. It removes all the karmic blocks so that when you put in the right kind of effort in your life, you will get solutions. Okay. So, you practice these tips which I have given you and then uh, we will see. We will have meditation now. Gently close your eyes. Relax completely. As the higher healing Shakti is being invoked, feel the energy entering you as you are inhaling. And the Shakti is spreading into each and every cell of your body as you are exhaling. With every breath, I am going deeper and deeper into myself.
I am not this body. I am not the five sense organs of perception. I am not these five sense organs of action. I stand apart as a witness. I stand apart from my own senses as a silent witness. and i look at my own senses as if i'm looking at another object and the senses are indeed very powerful but i have more power than my own senses i am one with that infinite power that supreme god principle within me the sense organs are perfectly under my control I am the master of my own senses. I have infinite powers within me. offer your gratitude to god supreme offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters Slowly come back 
let your consciousness come back slowly wriggle your fingers your toes open and close your palms a few times rub your palms together to create a warmth cup your eyes with your palms gently rub your eyes your cheeks forehead top of the head the back of the head and neck and slowly open your eyes Welcome back. So we had a very powerful session today. As I told you, this is the inner journey, the journey to become a sthita pragya, an enlightened person, and it all starts with understanding. yourself first the outer aspects of you and you start with your own senses so in the meditation today i have just introduced that energy where you stand apart from your own senses and start watching them we'll be building on that more as we go into these verses you know they have so much of depth such deep messages and the more we get into that through this yogic approach you will be able to gain complete mastery over yourself you know that happens gradually okay so uh, do your sadhana whatever i am giving in meditation here you don't need to practice that in your personal sadhana that i am making you do a few things and i'm also invoking the healing energy for you to absorb all this into the deepest layers of your personality so you don't need to practice that but do the yoga sankirtan sadhana on a daily basis okay Thank you very much. We'll meet next week. Thank you.